Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So this channel, Everyday Data Science, is all about trying to learn the different concepts involved in data science by practicing a lot of questions. In this video, I am going to solve this question on lead code regarding find the start and end numbers of continuous ranges and try to walk you through how we can develop solutions to such problems. The difficulty level of this is medium and this question has been asked in Amazon interviews a couple of times over the past one year. Okay, so let's jump right in. We are given a table called logs with only one column, log ID and the data type being integer. And log ID is the primary key for this table. So what does primary key mean? Non-null unique values. Each row of this table contains the ID in a log table. We are asked to write a SQL query to find the start and end number of continuous ranges in the table logs. Return the result table ordered by start ID. Okay. Let's go through this example, right? So this is the input table where we find a bunch of log IDs. So obviously if you see, we need to return the start ID and the end ID or basically the minimum and maximum values of the IDs in continuous rows. So if you see one, two, three, and then seven. So obviously this is one continuous uh, row, one, two, three. So the minimum value is one and maximum is three. Then comes another uh, continuity, right? 7 and 8. So minimum is 7, 8 is maximum. And 10 is by itself, so minimum as well as maximum is 10. And that is the output, right? Okay, so there is a very smart way of doing the, this or like let's forget the function that will do it. But like let's just uh, uh, try to think about the logic that we can, you know, put it here uh, to try to solve this question. Okay, so let me just copy this, right? Uh, so if I copy this um, here, now we have, okay, so this is uh, the, the log IDs. Now, if we can have some values here, right, which tells us that, okay, this belongs to a part of continuity and other one doesn't or something like that you see like where my mind is going like trying to think of something which can identify uh, whether there is a continuity or not because it is important because if uh, if you think about it our output depends upon finding that continuous ranges right so what's the property of being continuous right so if a series is continuous when the next number is just once greater than the previous number right so if you think about it uh, if we find or if we populate a second column which also increases by one every row so for example what i'm trying to say is like let's say we start with number one right so number one here then we increase it to number two number three four five six right now if we can have this right and do subtractions right so what is one minus one so you see how i am i am getting to the logic to know whether something is continuous so something is going to be continuous when the next number is one plus the previous number right so if we can do the same thing and then do the subtractions between the numbers then we can know whether uh, you know uh, do, it is a part of a continuous series or not let me show you how so if we subtract this right 1 minus 1 0 2 minus 2 is 0 3 minus 3 is 0 7 minus 4 is 3 8 minus 5 is 3 right and then 10 minus 6 is 4 it doesn't matter right had there been you know 11 say 12 13 14 whatever so here the numbers would have been uh, you know 7 8 9 10 right so if you do you can identify any length of the you know continuity using this trick right so 11 minus 7 is again 4 12 minus 8 is 4 13 minus 9 is 4 14 minus 10 is 4 because 
if it is continuous the next number is going to be plus one uh, the previous number and we are doing the same thing here so effectively we are not doing anything extra right so the difference is going to remain the same so now using this column the third column we can identify when uh, when the rows belong to a certain number do they belong to one continuous group when the number changes it belongs to another continuous group right so you see that is a logic that we can employ here or how we can find which of the rows of this table are belong to a continuous group and which do not right so what we can do is let's do this right let's uh, try to incorporate whatever we have discussed up till here into sql query so from the table called logs what are we doing we are returning the log id and then the difference of a number like we are creating a series and then we are subtracting it with the log id now what is the function that can do this right so basically assign unique values to different rows right so there is a function called a row number so row number it is a window function right so row number over you need to order by log id right because like it should be in uh, increasing order for this to take place you order by and this will create row number is basically going to create these values and then what you do you subtract this row number values from log id right so what you do log id minus row number right and you can alias it as whatever as div or whatever like let's say as div now so basically what uh, this is returning one column log id and the third one right so there is no this is just the intermediate step which like we took care of here only right so now we have this right so let me just you know uh, again copy paste this you know it would be easier so here and then here it would be another column called diff the difference was zero 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 and then it was three three and then four right so now this is what it is being returned now what we can do is we can basically you know store it in a common table expression so with ct as right so here we have this now from this common table expression what do we need to do we need to find for each of the continuous uh, values that we have what is the start id and the end id and start id is basically the minimum value in that continuous row and end id is the maximum value in this continuous row so like it's very easy what you can do is you can group by this difference and then find the minimum and the maximum values and finally order it by log id why because return the result table ordered by start id right so what you can do is from this common table expression cte you group by the diff right so you group by diff so zero zero is one group and then you return return the minimum value return the minimum value of log id column in that group alias it as start id right and then return the maximum of log id in that group and alias it as end id right so what is this going to do is basically okay group zero minimum is one maximum is three group three minimum is seven maximum is eight group four minimum is ten maximum is ten right so now we have this 
and what we need, the final thing that we need to do is order by start id right so because our output should be ordered by start id in ascending order so start id let me remove this this looks good let me go ahead and run this and see what happens so yeah this is accepted and our output is same as expected output let me go ahead and submit it to see if it passes all the test cases so yeah this passes all the test cases and it's a success so this is one way to do this let me know if how did you find this logic and if you understood like how i arrived at this at this logic let me even know if you found another way or a better way or a more trickier way to do this in simpler lines or a more logical thing to follow uh, again this was a bit tricky question because here you had to you know try to come up with a way to know whether you know a particular row belongs to a part of uh, you know a, a continuous group another thing uh, which i was thinking of let me know if you can write a solution using that is can you use the lead uh, window function here so lead basically what it does so if you write lead of log id so it will create a new column where it will uh, take the next value right so here it would be two here it would be three seven eight 10 and then null can you employ that can you use that to do this let me know in the comment section uh, can you use unbounded preceding current row basically frames to you know create partitions in this case let me know if you can think of any solutions in these regards and this is one of the solutions and i think and i hope the video was useful to you let me know in the comment section as well and i will see you guys in the next video